Every day, millions of North Americans make their way through concrete canyons to go to work. The concentration of people, energy, and ideas makes our cities powerhouses of commerce, productivity, and culture. But power requires fuel. And a plan working its way through Washington today to heat up the buildings and gas up the SUVs down there involves getting that fuel from up here. The Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is the wildest place left in America. The refuge is the only place in North America that protects a complete spectrum of Arctic and subarctic landscapes. Up here is the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Along the Alaska-Canada border, less than a thousand miles from the North Pole, oil advocates in the White House and Congress want to open up drilling in one of the most precious natural areas on Earth. We got timber, we got water, we got tourism, we got fish, and we got oil and minerals. But they're taking it out as fast as they can take. Sarah James is a spokesperson for the Gwich'in tribe, a people who lived on this land for thousands of years before 19th century Russia sold Alaska to the United States. It's really important to our people that this land stay free. Jonathan Solomon of Fort Yukon heads the Gwich'in steering committee. He, Sarah James, and Norma Kasi, a Gwich'in from Canada's Yukon Territory, speak for some 7,000 of their people spread over 15 villages. All around the sacred calving grounds and the special places, all open for development already. If drilling is allowed, the Gwich'in people, whose name means the land where life began, see the life they know in danger of coming to an abrupt end. I was born and raised living amongst the caribou. Caribou walked by me just a few feet away from me where I was a baby laying on the ground in the caribou. I could hear them grunting walking by, and this is like a part of my life. They fed me. If it wasn't for the caribou, I wouldn't be alive. The Gwich'in still derive 90% of their diet from caribou. It's a way of life. It's a people. It's human rights versus oil. I'm opposed to drilling in a place where you might get six months of uh, energy at best, and where you will have no impact whatsoever on the global price of oil. In January 2001, Alaska Senator Frank Murkowski illustrated his view of the issue with a blank white signboard. This is all you see in winter, the senator said. What's wrong with drilling for oil here? We've been around a long time, and we took care of that land, and in return it took care of us. The people of Alaska don't pay state taxes. In fact, the state pays them. Every resident receives an annual oil dividend check for about $2,000. Needless to say, you'll find a lot of Alaskans who favor drilling. A few hundred miles west of the refuge is Prudhoe Bay, the largest oil field on the continent. Industry supporters say lessons learned at Prudhoe would allow drilling in the refuge to be less extensive and less damaging to the environment. Besides, they say, the central Arctic herd of caribou around Prudhoe Bay is doing just fine. But I know that from the area, you know, you look at it, and it's the biggest, biggest mass production area in the world right now. The fate of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge will ultimately be decided in the U.S. Congress. So James, Kasi, and Solomon travel regularly to Capitol Hill to drive home the importance of protecting the caribou, the land, and the Gwich'in culture. We have to do everything in our power to, uh, to try and educate as many people as fast as possible. From the Arctic tundra to the halls of state, three crusaders from two countries continue to deliver their message of survival. Not just for the caribou, not just for their brothers and sisters of the Gwich'in tribe, but for the land that has sustained them for centuries. We are caribou people. We've been there from time and memorial, and we're, we didn't come from anywhere. Creator put us there to take care of that part of the world, and we have that good. And we're not going anywhere. We're here to stay. For outstanding environmental achievement in North America, the 2002 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded jointly to Sarah James of Arctic Village, Alaska, to Norma Kasi of Yukon Territory, Canada, and to Jonathan Solomon of Fort Yukon, Alaska, United States of America.